hi dr shalini welcome to talk with titans and uh, we really we really so happy to have you on board uh, for this session and uh, so a little about about fluent live i'm sure you know and a little about talk with titans as well so fluent live is one of our flagship products with you favor and uh, we are here to improve communication skills to the masses it's a big problem and not just an indian problem but a much much big global problem as well and uh, so this show is basically to create awareness amongst people so i am the product head for fluent life part of the founding team at new faber and uh, we've been in the we've been in business for over 10 years and uh, trying to improve the education system uh, like you're trying to improve the healthcare systems in the country as well so it's a similar kind of change although uh, you know it is as relevant as anything else so uh, so welcome welcome firstly welcome you i uh, really want to welcome you to this uh, to this session and uh, to the viewers i'll probably want you to introduce a little about yourself and uh, let them know what what all the kind of good work that you're doing and in a gist if you could give us a uh, you know a brief introduction that'll be great hi everyone and thanks for thanks for having me Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here, and thanks for hitting the problem um, on kind of uh, which is like none of us really think about uh, in terms of career growth, the communication um, issue. But after you mentioned it, I just started thinking how vast this whole uh, thing is about, and why we do not focus it at all, um, and we just take it for granted that okay, you speak okay, you speak well, you don't speak well, that's it. Like. people just get into two categories in the world is one speaks well one speak doesn't doesn't speak well um i think the uh, uh, just to speak about myself i'm the i'm shamil prod as i said i'm i'm trained in anesthesia critical care and neuromedical from the uk i'm um, a doctor and then we came back to india i and my other co-founder of travels in sadar and we started this company called iket air ambulance and this is a, a fold up to five year old company where we have done We have pioneered a lot of things. We have a different specialist teams. We have created like history. We we have million milestones. Uh, it is kind of a greenfield project for India, and um, our vision is to fly people, um, especially the trauma victims, from the roads. We should we don't want anybody to die who is salvageable. Free free of cost. This is what we are working towards because in India, every four minutes we have a death on Indian roads, and the people who die are between twenty to forty. and um we have other uh, i'm also a co-founder for the company called uh, fem education private limited this is a training wing and where we train the aeromedical doctors and paramedics we call them aeromedical commandos of india these people can do uh, from a survey in trauma up to opening a chest road side to do a cesarean section from the road side to save life and uh, nearly 40% of the deaths what i mentioned could be easily um, uh, prevented if timely intervention is done uh, especially with the skill set and a chopper both involving like a speed and a skill uh, both are equally important in terms of saving life and the third thing is uh, iket foundation which i'm the chief person of iket foundation we have uh, multiple initiatives running this i can take the whole day to talk about it one of them is national organ donation awareness campaign because uh, i cat uh, air ambulance is highest number of organ air lifts and 80 to 90% of the people waiting on organ uh, organ uh, wait list like uh, registered to be a recipient die before they get organ a uh, extremely uh, sad story because like these people could have potentially got organ from those people who are dying every 4 minutes on the indian road because most so of them are potential donors in a very cynical way of looking at it so there is a, a huge area we need to work upon uh, public awareness um, organ donor registry uh, icu therapy for organ preservation and of course like uh, transplant programs so that's the reason why i get to get up um, as one of its initiatives and also uh, i'm co-founder for the coordinate campaign which is run under like the ages of iket foundation which has done nearly 24 worth of uh, donations across india um again we have multiple initiatives running running under that uh, sos a save a service campaign mission cope for plasma which i was heading the karnataka government and then um, we also have uh, breathe india where we have converted like uh, thousands of oxygenated uh, non oxygenated beds into oxygenated bed when there was severe shortage and we have taken a breathe icu where we adopted icu we did a massive um, 
CPR program that is cardiopulmonary resuscitation to save life um, when a cardiac arrest happened because 84% happen outside hospital or at home. Less than 1% of Indian population is trained. So we did it in a district called Chittadurga uh, with a very great, with the great support uh, from the local. Uh, Mr. Naveen is a person who supported us locally. And we, are, we, we trained on one single day, nearly 30,000 people and created a world record. And we are training further 3 lakh people going into villages. Um, Heart and Stroke Foundation of India, which is a subsidiary of Heart, um, uh, American Heart Association, along with Society of Emergency Medicine, and crypto relief has um, helped and funded and donated us to do this. Uh, so um, again, like we've taken up like very massive initiatives and we are very successfully rendering it as well. And this is kind of a nutshell of what I'm involved in and what we what we do. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think amount of relevance in health is uh, is bleak right now. As you just rightly mentioned, only one percent of the population know how to do a CPR. And uh, I think the, the I think that is one of the most essential life skill that I think probably it should it should happen in schools, right? It should it should be it should be there in schools for a kid to even know uh, what do you do when you encounter such a situation. So awesome! I mean, that is it is amazing with the kind of work and the kind of reach that you already have, with the kind of records that you're making already. I think that is that is remarkable in its way. Uh, and hope, of course, you keep uh, keep keep doing uh, all the good work. Uh, I think the healthcare system just got a shook with with uh, with COVID recently, and uh, I think people are people like you are going to get more and more relevant, which is awesome. So uh, awesome! Thank you again for for that introduction, and thank you for being here and uh, enlightening our folks, not just to basically make sure that uh, you know that 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 there are too many things that are far more important than academics. Uh, it's also important to be be rightfully there in order to get a job in order to you know in order to be relevant in the in the world and uh, there are multiple ways to do it right if i'm if i'm being uh, you know diplomatically right there are multiple ways to be uh, relevant in this world and that i mean everybody can choose their own path and i think we should more and more encourage that i think as as people as leaders uh, i think we should more and more encourage that and you know to have everybody try their own flavor so uh, just directly jump in to the to the to the topic of our discussion, and that is to do with communication skills. And uh, I mean, we see that as a huge problem, and I'm sure it is a huge problem in the medical field as well. I mean, before that, the ones the topics that we were talking about, uh, it is a huge problem in the medical field as well because uh, uh, communication is so important that if you tell a wrong problem, probably you'll be treated for the wrong things, right? So. Uh, I mean, from there, I mean, I'm not trying to be frivolous, but it is from uh, from that small aspect of it in the tier four, tier five town, very difficult and hardly, uh, you know, understandable and comprehensible for anyone to, you know, even tell what is paining or what is not paining. So, uh, and also if you, I mean, jump to where we are right now, I think underemployment and unemployment are such a big issue. Uh, the world is talking about it. And uh, I mean, it seems that there are only say, you know, six or 7% of the world population who are contributing to the corporate GDP. And uh, that is a huge problem. And if it continues to be that, of course, it's, it's going to be, uh, I mean, people are going to start killing each other, right? So that is where, that is where it looks like. But uh, at the end of the day, we are here to stop it. And I think communication skills plays a huge role in order to get a job, in order to do well in your career, and also in order to grow. So, uh, I mean, the first thing is that, that I would want to ask you, or I want you to throw some light on, is the interview process, right? So, the moment an interview a candidate comes for an interview, the first uh, thing that we look at, I mean, that's what I do, is look at their CV. And if their CV is qualified or if their CV is good, if their CV is creative, then you want to speak to them. And once you speak to them, uh, largely that usually we find is that the CV is not them at all. I mean, those two are two different things. And uh, they do the CV as part of you know, a very regular process. And when you meet them, you see a very different person altogether. And uh, usually people can't hold themselves together for about five or 10 minutes and hence the conversation breaks. And that's a huge problem with, uh, with communication skills is that people can't hold a conversation for a long time or even for say four or five minutes. And uh, I'm sure you would be taking some interviews as well. I mean, you're, taking, you're speaking to a lot of folks, you're speaking to a lot of people outside the organization. 
you're dealing with a government uh, that itself is, is, is I mean, speaks volumes about the kind of people you're interacting with. And uh, I'm sure you'll have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, lessons, stories, and a lot of, uh, you know, what do you say, wisdom around that. So how important do you think uh, is communication skills and how does it affect somebody's, uh, you know, ability to do a deal with you, ability to get hired by you, and ability to grow with you? Um, yes, like um, working in UK, training in UK for a decade, and uh, as uh, medical doctors, when we have to pass our exams, we have a separate station called communication mm -hmm. skills. So mm -hmm. we are trained in communication. We have uh, exam in communication about how we speak to patient, how do you break a bad news? How do you um, uh, deal with a difficult uh, patient or difficult mom of a sick child? So uh, this communication has, is being taken extremely seriously in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, ex, in kind of in Western countries. After you, you brought this pay, uh, topic up, I'm just thinking backwards, like um, in India, we never taught on communication skills and uh, nobody emphasized it. In India, uh, there is one thing which we all grew up on, um, silence is good, which has to be like, you know, that, that is a very wrong thing to be have taught because after going to UK, I realized it, the silence is taken as underconfidence. Um, Non-communication is taken as like, you know, um, a lack of knowledge. It's not taken as silent. Like the way Indian um, Indian culture is like, you know, the, you remain silent, you're, you know, like you're some kind of a, <laughs> a learned person and things like that. So that attitude of uh, the elders has to change uh, when they're bringing the child up. Even now, a lot of parents um, uh, shut the kids up by saying like, you know, um, you talk too much. Uh, and uh, it, they never te teach them to speak the right thing and they just kind of keep snubbing that you talk too much and they don't let uh, uh, people express. So, um, of course, when we hire people, I think in any kind of uh, interview around the world, communication skill is extremely important, but for a doctor, communication can, uh, can also ruin their careers. If they're not explained to the patients because nowadays in the medical legal world is getting so strong. Uh, we have to communicate very clearly what we do. And it's called informed consent in, uh, in National Health Service in the UK. And that informed consent is all about communication. Like, And in my career, I've seen the doctors who have gotten into serious trouble with the patient's relatives are not the one who failed in their duties, are not the ones who, um, uh, who uh, didn't know what to do or didn't treat properly. They are the ones who did not communicate properly. So the communication is the one which gets uh, into trouble, especially in a highly specialized field like us. So um, having said that, like from a delivery boy uh, to uh, the CEO, the person who uh, communicates what he thinks in his head is the one person who's going to be the winner all the time there. So uh, of course, like one of the anecdotes I can quote is when I went to UK, my first job interview, uh, there were 100 people who were shortlisted for two jobs because um, they had a policy in that trust, uh, we call it trust, the hospitals are called, come under trust. And uh, um, they said like everybody, whoever is eligible has to be, uh, has to be shortlisted. So the, the, that was a hospital policy and the shortlisted 100 people were eligible for the job. There were 400 applications, they scrutinized and 100 were due. And um, I was the last to be interviewed because my flight was next day morning to a different city. Because like I wasn't flying the same day and the interview went the whole day, which should have finished. Like I was thinking it's going to be ended by like three or four people to be like half an hour, or maximum two hours will be done. And it was the last person, but that time like I was um, first angry and then put off and then like, I can't be bothered. So <laughs> it is now like I'll just go and do it. And um, the way I approached the entire thing was like, uh, I wasn't, of course, like tense because by the time I'd given up, after looking at 100 feet candidates, I thought I'd never get this job. And the second thing was like, um, maybe that gave me a confidence, like, because I don't care, I'll speak anything I want. Um, and um, so that gave, me a, that, that gave me the boldness to answer whatever they, are, um, they threw at me in a very relaxed manner. Um, 
at their level you know like that's what i was trying to say when confidence and communication is so important there so i had the confidence because i'd given up in my head that i don't need this man i'll get this job and i was because i was at ease i was able to communicate um, like other people who are reading textbook outside and i was just kind of a at ease i answered next day i got a call and they said like uh, oh you you got the job and i said like there were two jobs i said yeah they said yes two jobs one of them you got i said there were 100 people i said yes you still got they, then like uh, i i asked them to spell my name because i thought maybe they called it wrong first <laughs> <laughs> and they said like yeah yes for siara h for hotel a for alpha l for lee you know <laughs> i made them spell my entire name so that is not the wrong person they were calling like <laughs> yeah. so like uh, that that's when um, kind of uh, it started the first time i opened up to me to to the uk world that you know mm-hmm. it is your uh, communication with the conference is the only thing which is going to take you um, even if you're, you see that not I was not even bothered it was not even right same I may not even be saying the right answers for the questions just because i was in bother but i think that the way I communicated is what got me the job because that is the most important of being a doctor like the way you communicate mm-hmm. um and if you because half the half the battle is won with the patient if they are mentally prepared and confide in you and also trust you as their doctor mm-hmm. no matter how how best I mean best your skills are what you are like you're a rank holder but if you cannot convince your patient look i'm going to operate on you or i'm going to do this procedure on you uh unless they trust you like they not even tr- give their dog to you to treat Mm-hmm. so building that uh, trust to begin with starts with communication and uh, good communication is the only thing which has kind of a, um, especially the the jobs where you require like even you go to a, a restaurant um, you don't know what the waiter is serving you but like he comes to you and speaks to you nicely and says this is my best thing on my menu you already mm-hmm. like uh, started trusting him and the way he said it is what mattered to you not that like you know and you also forgive him because food is not good like if he's rude you will not forgive him. he'll become your first target if the food is not good and is still uh, is nice to you then you blame someone else and say oh, the chef is yeah. bad the waiter is good and you when you uh, when you give your uh, feedback that's what you do so yes so absolutely communication is the starting point of the success story true i brought up a very important point that uh, i mean when you don't pretend to be another person i think you you communicate far better uh, i think that just brings uh, brings us to a very important point uh, that it is so important to not pretend i think in this world right now i think the kids are taught to be politically right the kids are taught to always give the right answers the kids are taught to basically say the right things uh and not really be themselves because of course with the outrage that the social media has bought that you know i mean people call ourselves as you know we we kind of pride ourselves with freedom of speech but of course i mean you people are always scared to put anything out any opinions are people are scared okay will i be will i be you know uh, if i'm opinionated then it's a problem if i don't have an opinion also it's a problem so the largely i think people are trying to pretend right so i think that i see a lot since you brought it up that people come in to come into an interview and they try to pretend to be the ideal candidate right they try to pretend to be someone else who they think you will be impressed with uh and just being yourself actually does the job the best right to so being yourself is the are the people only you hire eventually if you look at it from a counterintuitive point of view you want to see somebody by themselves people who they are uh, you know at their core so uh, i think for me that's a very important point but how do we train our kids to be themselves how do we train our kids to not be consumed and be subsumed by the uh, the social media rant that keeps going on uh, how do we how do we show them that that is real and your real life is very different from you know people's real life because that's what people pretend right when you see an instagram you see a post and you see that okay everybody is happy everybody is partying everybody is going to places everybody is traveling and the and everybody is thin right <laughs> and the only thing you feel about is okay i'm so miserable with you know your own life that you try to be someone else so i think the originality uh, is the core uh, in terms of communication but the more important problem is that the next generation who are going to be the future leaders for us the future ceos for us the future communicators for us and how important is is being original being true to yourself being authentic 
and being natural i mean at anything that you do uh, i think success will automatically come with it and even if it doesn't that itself is successful right being being original throughout your life so uh, how do we how do we basically from a parenting perspective from a parents perspective i mean all the parents that who who, who might be listening to this as well uh that how do we tell them that okay communication skills are far more impo- important than your maths and science right your maths and science are going to open your first door it is the it is the other skills that is going to take him ahead in life right the, i think the the amount of concentration that i think the indian culture has treated and you know that has taken us towards maths and science is bizarre and uh, nobody is hiring for maths scores anymore uh, nobody is growing because of their maths scores anymore and uh, but we'll have to uh, I mean, we'll have to, of course, change that. But how do we? What is? What is? What will be your message to parents? And if if there are any uh, any anything more point, any more points to add on to that? So uh, I think um, uh, as a parent, uh, we still I think we linger on what our parents taught us. So uh, one of the things which I mentioned before was silence is gold. Um, you have to put your head down and work. and uh, you are considered to be decent if you don't speak much and also like um, you have to be um, uh, when i was told my one of my uncles um, complained to my mom she speaks too much for a doctor and my sister is a lawyer and he went and told she speaks too less for a lawyer so i was <laughs> confused i'm a parent and it's like what did you speak so much what way you so much that the guy said speak too much for a doctor So I was like, "Son, is that me? That is that is the culture. Uh, what our parents gave us." But I think we have to close generation gap. We can't bring our principles what we were brought up with and uh, uh, give give the same thing to the future generation. I think we have to change with time and age and what requires today to be um, uh, pros- be prosperous in every field they go into. it it is no more about uh, science it's no more about technology it, it, they're all as you said like just kind of one of the fields is choose but to be successful what we're doing in today in india we are still have the mindset of uh, survival and survival to have a house a car and a, a television set and going on a holiday a couple of holidays a year i think that day what you do is when you have that mindset mindset you create uh, a mass but employment but you don't create leaders to have to create leaders there's a different uh, way we have to approach it i think we have every single person has to be trained to be a leader it's not about employment anymore it's about what you contribute what you contribute to yourself to your mental health and to society you have to develop as a holistic person than just be focused on like you know okay i have two kids i have uh, i'll get a job I'll, i'll become a doctor i'll become an engineer i'll become a whatever Uh, one set path and then i'll get my uh, get kids married or get a son my son job and then i'll retire i'll go on a holiday and then have retirement book i think this there should be a shift shift from what our parents it was a uh, important thing to what it is for the new generation because this world is full of competition if you are going to aim to be an average you'll go below average and you have to aim to be a leader at least then you get somewhere i'm not even uh, advocating that uh, strong uh, uh, competitiveness what i'm trying to say is there need to be a balance between um, aiming higher at the same time having a life uh, uh, work life balance as well which is not easy either i mean um, as a doctor i know because as a um, critical care specialist uh, medicine like you know this is a lifestyle for us and you have to be mentally prepared when you take up these kind of professions this is not a uh, profession it's a lifestyle so when you are choosing professions like this you need to know yourself like what is the best for me and what do you what i'll be able to cope at the same time parents also have to be involved in uh, helping them to grow in whatever they are do best so if my child wants to paint i don't want them to make a chef my child wants to be a chef i don't want to make them um, make her or make him a doctor so encourage them in what they good at because the world is full of opportunities and um, everybody can prosper in whatever they do and every field can take you places now uh, it's not like when it used to be only three professions were considered to be good anymore and in fact medical profession restricts a lot of people from doing other things and um, thinking out of the box like for example if you have a 
uh, you can hardly see anybody doing after engineering going into uh, getting into IAM or um, doing something like you know totally different from what they're trained to do. But when you choose medicine as a career, you just stick to that and grow in that. So um, it's very important to say, look, there are not only three things in the world that you can become. There are other things where you can excel in. For that, of course, confidence is important. And um, opening the mind uh, for the children to do about um, other things like art. Uh, as I said, one of the things is, um, you know, uh, one of my friends' son wants to become an actor. Why not? I mean, why do you want to say he, uh, an actor is a bad thing? Like, if you say, look, that's one of the good professions to choose, why not? And you train them and get them into acting school. Why is that only the actor's child should become an actor? Sure. You don't have to be a, like, you know, a top paid actor. You can be a, still a very good actor and still sure. can make a living out of it and excel. So, Absolutely. I think uh, I think you pointed that out very rightly that, uh, I mean, professions are nowadays being judged. Uh, people don't recognize talents anymore. People suddenly have started recognizing uh, everything apart from talent. So, uh, so, you know, suddenly, suddenly your uh, ability to get a job is very high and your ability to get a job is very highly judged. And uh, some some professions are looked down upon. I think uh, the bigger bigger uh, subject is being that being a teacher. Uh, if you're a teacher, the first thing that the society is going to tell you that okay, you didn't find a job in the corporate sector, hence you are a teacher, and nobody really encourages. So that is that is absolutely right. I think people don't want to be actors, or at least people who want to be actors don't tell that I want to be an actor. People want to shy away from it. Uh, I think largely a problem is. Uh, if I have to pinpoint it amongst human beings, I think the problem is by not being true to yourself and uh, by not and, and by being largely self-denial about everything, right? So uh, I think the self-denial factor is the bigger problem that you don't want to you don't want to believe that you're bad at communication skills. And now that you believe you're not bad, you don't want to solve it either, right? It's like the first few days when you have fever, right? Then the moment you have fever, the first thing you say is that okay. I'll be fine, right? And you don't want to solve it and you'll not want to cure it, cure yourself as well. And then when it gets worse after two or three days, and that's when you go to see, go to see a doctor. Had you gone on the first day, probably it will not have lasted for three days as well. So uh, people are largely self-denial. And uh, I think that comes from, again, a lot of content being consumed left, right, and center. And uh, people do not, do not really believe that it's an important skill to solve. People are still worried about academics. People are still worried about getting their next, you know, CAT and SAT scores for their uh, future studies. And nobody's really planning to uh, improve the most important factor there. So how do we, how do we create awareness? How do we, uh, what is the message from your end to say the viewers who are facing communication skills problem, but do not want to talk about it or who are, who do not even know whether they are facing communication, you know, the communication problem at all. And that, that's a huge sector of people as well, you know, uh, because a lot of people believe that it's a skill that is not going to solve my roti kapada makan, right? If it is not solving my day-to-day -day bread and butter, why do I have to solve that problem? Yeah. So uh, I think it is largely, I think the only analogy here is to, is to take care of your health, right? So you have to take care of your health so well, so that you don't fall ill, right? So you go walking, you do those half an hour exercises every day, not because you're ill, because you wanting to prevent an illness that is going to come in the future or might come or may not come but you don't want to wait for it to come and then start exercising right? so you'll have to do those exercises prior you have to invest in yourself in your body uh, to prevent a certain problem and communication skills is largely that uh, you have to improve on it not to not to not to solve a current problem but to prevent a future problem that comes into uh, being so i think largely people are shy and uh, i mean how would you address that and uh, I think the viewers would help, uh, will be really helpful for the viewers as well. Yeah. So um, again, I would like to quote this example um, uh, from the UK because, like you know, we always take UK as a golden standard, gold standard yeah. for a lot of things. But uh, the reason I would uh, uh, still quote UK as a gold standard because, like, they address the problem at the root. Uh, commit. Uh, I mean even if it's education or if it is, it's uh, medicine, it's engineering, you take it for any field, like, you know, they, they do one thing, but they know what they're doing the best. The plumber is best at his work. If um, it's a mechanic, he knows what he's doing. 
and uh, if it is like even in the medical speciality if like is a heart failure nurse she know more than a doctor because she is specialized only in heart failures and she knows inside out of it so they pick up something and they go chase that and get they become the best in that there's a reason why there is no inequality in, uh, in at the job level like you know everybody does it and everybody is equal like my car cleaner is to come in a bmw when i used to drive it now so um, i mean that that actually explains like why um, why there is uh, well, there's no discrimination at all as you were saying the discrimination like of course in india to be honest uh, uh, gurudev or baba we say and then teachers are con- considered to be one of the most noble profession and that's where the children start like you know molding themselves into whatever they're going to be and uh, communication problem has to be addressed at that level at school level um because if we go let it go it will go into um, into a problem that it will never be able to reverse it uh, i think um, one of the reasons like the children lose their communication skill and become a, a, a kind of a, um introverts and things like that is lack of confidence and lack of confidence is the way the way the teachers are ha- handled and they're not trained to handle as well part of a problem uh, for example this kid doesn't speak the kid gets ignored the kid who speaks oh. the most gets all the attention oh. and um, they never address why this kid doesn't and when you go to the parent teachers meeting the all you hear it the kid doesn't say anything kid doesn't speak and you know, always quiet always in a dreamy world always i mean doesn't uh, interact but i would want to i know you have you are you are having like 30 children or 25 children in your class but the child spends the best part of the day with you and no. if you cannot do it what will i do at home the kid no. the most social skill development happens at the school level and uh, because um if we say the most productive time 8 to 10, 8 to like 3 or 8 to 4 is done is with you and you are the ones who are trained to do with this and i am not like as a parent i only took it but you have seen hundreds and hundreds of children so you should have a system of making this kids talk or even helping them out to what I mean to bringing their best ability out Oh. and encouraging them in whatever they are like don't we have academic um, goals all the time because i have seen the uh, i've seen like in my own experience the kids who were and getting highest marks didn't do well in the school when didn't do well in their lives then oh. there are other problems like you know relationship it could be relationship problem it could be problem with the uh, at work or it could be um, mental health issues uh, they 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 mean no more it's no more academics it has to be uh, as i said uh, even previously that it has to be holistic development um think about we have a so um, situ- situational awareness about outside world and uh, of course uh, i mean to express you need communication to express what you are best at you need communication and uh, the more you think about it uh, it all boils down to communication as i said like of course we interview quite a few people we have the not just fleet of doctors who are and the paramedical staff and other staff working in the city in kind of aero medical company and we um, we ours is a like you know a world of variables so every day we communicate with because like to ha- make a one aero medical transfer happen we have to communicate with the uh, uh, staff from the like referring hospital receiving hospital patient's family um then the ground handling staff then the operation staff and the aviation staff then the pilots and then um uh, if we are doing like you know the green corridor between the airport to the hospital then the police then the there's like million stakeholders and nobody understands what happens behind one a medical transfer there are like nearly five uh, groups uh, whatsapp groups go active when one transfer happens um so without communication like even with the one small missing link whole thing will fall apart mm-hmm. so uh like uh, the entire thing happens uh, in a, in a kind of a zero there's zero zero room for mistakes because medicine and aviation is they are both a way i mean highly sensitive field and um, the way we train or when we choose people like interview of course they need to have good communication skill apart from the, apart from that they need to be a very good team player 
Sure. We paired up the all, everybody who works with us until now has been paired up with someone else, a little senior who has been working, and then they are mentored. We mm. don't sit and teach them medicine. We don't teach them because it's been taken for granted. They know all this, mm -hmm. and we are going and doing this procedures, extremely critical procedures in a very remote locations, and um, we are not in the comfort zone of hospital, our own hospital, with our own staff and with my. A security guard waiting outside mm -hmm. itself, getting into trouble. We are in remote locations where everything is strange for us. Mm -hmm. The hospital is strange, the equipment is strange, the uh, hospital teams are strange, and uh, the diligent and also the confidence and communication, what we require is at par. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it has to be the best. Um, and we reiterate it a lot uh, in how kind of you need to address this, how to address mm -hmm. it if you're a family, if you're a patient. And until today, like um, um, touch wood, we have had a spotless graph despite doing this highly sensitive um, uh, missions across the world, we purely because of the way we communicate and the way we explain how things will happen, the way we communicate how things can go wrong, how we can deal. They say 40,000 feet, there's nobody to witness what you did and what you did not do. Uh, but still, a mom will uh, trust a child with you, a dad will, I mean, a brother will trust a sister with you, and a, um, and a son will trust a father with you. For you to take thousands of miles to go from one place to another and safely um, making them reach a hospital for higher care or whatever it is. And that's only possible because we win their confidence. The only way of winning their confidence is I can't show my degrees to them. I can't show what all I've done. Um, I can't show my skills. The only way they trust you is the way we communicate. So uh, I think the essence is about communication, but what is communication? It's just the confidence. And what is confidence? It is about what you have been doing, putting it on the table in a very effective manner. Awesome. That's so true. That's so true. I think you just summed it up very well. So uh, awesome. I think thank you again. I, thank think, you. I think the viewers are, uh, would have understood. And I hope they take some action with uh, with the wisdoms that you have shared. And uh, out there, anybody, any of our viewers in the medical profession, I mean, now you know it is more important. I mean, your medical profession is great. Uh, it is uh, the, those skills are of course something that you learn and come. But uh, if you don't communicate well, you could end up in a lot of problems. So I think all the folks in the medical uh, stream, I think this this session would have helped yeah. you. Uh, if, you, if, you uh, if you look at it, like you know, yeah. when you were kids, you used to go to a doctor. The doctor used to be the tight-lipped man uh, who can only he'll inject. He doesn't speak. He only man a few words. Mm, yeah. What's the problem? Yeah. No, okay. Fine. The yeah. That's it. Like he walk away. He true, doesn't walk true. anymore like that. Yeah. People true. Tools, like the one who can build confidence in you. Um, coming from UK for us, communication skill is the biggest part of our for our, our profession. In true. India, even now, a lot of patients come back and tell those doctors don't communicate. They don't speak. They don't tell yeah. us anything. Uh, I don't know what's happening. My, my my dad's been in ICU for last 10 days. Nobody has told us anything. True. These are the people who get into trouble when uh, things go wrong because they're not being communicated. And no. in especially in medical profession, if somebody, any of your students or your viewers would like to take up a medical profession, I think no other pro profession other than politi uh, politics, <laughs> communication <laughs> So important, at least politics, you mess up, you mess up with your career. In uh, medical profession, you mess up, you mess up someone's life. Life, Some yeah. World. Yeah, I mean, um, my dad is my world. Like that, is somebody's dad, you're Absolutely. Their world. So you, you will mess up with their entire world. Like you, it could be anything from removing, removing a small car to um, having a hair transplant. I so, think you need to be extremely, uh, yeah, emphasize sure. on your communication skill and build. Of course. Of course. I mean, it, it goes without saying, right? It goes without saying that you'll have to communicate well. Uh, and more importantly, as you said, it is it's at the cost of somebody's life. So if you are not communicative, you might, uh, you might, your blunders can, can't be undone, right? <laughs> you can't go back. You can't communicate, become a radiologist because you only exactly. see the dark. <laughs> no, that is actually not true. <laughs> so, because, <laughs> sure. So, uh, thank you very much for your session. I think thank you very much for your time and your wisdom and the anecdotes that you shared. I think the viewers are going to have a great uh, time listening to this. 
and viewing us and i hope they take a lot of takeaways from here and uh, i would wish you all the best firstly for all that you're doing i wish you all the best for all the future endeavors that you're taking up uh, feel free to let us know if you could play any Thank role you. any role helping any of your doctors any of your doctors outside yes. uh, as well as well we are happy to help anyone improve their communication skills of course you're there to improve their uh, medical skills of course you are professional so you will be doing better job than us yep uh, we can help in anything i mean as long as it's a great cause and it's helping the nation build and uh, especially with the current crisis we could we could really chip in feel free to ask we are we are always in to help people around and thank you for this session thank you so much for your time and uh, i hope i hope we catch up sometime as well and sure. uh, yeah thank you so much it was a pleasure thank having you pleasure thanks bye bye take care